All right guys, so today I'm bringing you my round with Owen Jones, the ADCC Euros 66 kilogram cross champion. And I'll be breaking down kind of what we're doing and what I learned from him and what I'm implementing from this round into my game now. So one of the first things that I really took away from this round after watching it back is my fucking horrific wrestling stance. Bruh. This was around the time right after Worlds and both myself and my main training partner, Justin, we got back to the gym and we were like, yo, why the fuck did you not tell me that I looked retarded when I was wrestling? So fast forwarding to today, one of the main differences I noticed in my stance is my elbows are a little more pinched in and I feel like my hips are more engaged and my feet are better spread apart. Whereas when I was rolling with Owen, my feet were very awkwardly positioned as well as my elbows were flared out, giving options for my opponent to underhook and not really giving me a good ability to attack or defend. So that was one of the big things that I wanted to focus on, but one of the bigger lessons that I learned that day is coming up in a few seconds. But first, Owen is going to punish me for standing like a fool and he'll take me over on a double leg right into half guard. So something that I took away right here, as he's in half guard, he's very adamant about staying on his feet. So if you watch the leg pommel right here, he'll develop a grip on my bottom knee before then lifting his leg backwards, extracting his foot, before then switching the angle of his leg, forcing it to my hip line and putting a lot of pressure on my guard. But unfortunately, we have to reset because we're a little too close to the edge. And now we'll see the biggest guard passing sequence I took away from this match. And I'll try to break it down so you guys can understand as well. So to start up his pass and initiate something from my seated guard, we go palm to palm and he uses something, I'm not sure what he calls this, I just call it a hand swing, but there's a very small detail that he does that makes it super effective. So as we lock hands, he first raises my hand up before then swinging it down in a steering motion. And that's what gives him that spin that allows him to immediately cut the angle and start a sequence. As he starts to attack that angle and moves in low and I frame onto him, he uses something I call a hip wall where instead of fighting my frames attacking into them, he raises his posture, knocking my frames off and prevents me from regarding by forcing my hips to face the opposite direction as he does this. There are a few other details, but I'm gonna save those for the camping progression video that I'll be doing later in a few weeks. For now, we can look at this gem. As I go to turn into Owen, when my back comes off the mat, he uses that back exposure, folding over my chest and securing a rear naked choke. So as it's my turn to pass, you'll notice that I also like to go palm to palm, but I like to pass in a different way. My left leg steps to the inside of Owen's guard, and I'll use my right hand to push his other leg between my legs to solidify a position I call headquarters. Using some of my known outside passing at the time, I'll try to spin him around and cut the angle, but he's a really good guard player, so it's definitely not gonna be that easy, and I'm forced to recover back at a knee shield. As he goes for the kiss of the dragon, all I'm doing to counter that is sitting to my hip or my knee and closing off the space under my hips, and even as he goes to invert, as I create space and distance from his torso to my hips, he's not able to fully invert and he's forced to come back up. I know my best chances to pass Owen is going to be from headquarters, but I'm also trying to execute outside passes as well. But eventually, I'm just going to step back into headquarters and he'll push me off, but I re-engage with a deep knee slice, almost passing, but he's able to get that left hand, or sorry, his right hand in and frame, pushing me off and nearly catches me in an arm bar. But thankfully, I'm able to twist my elbow out of the pocket of his, of his hips, and I'll be able to save myself from that submission and come back on top. So once again, going palm to palm and uh, stepping into headquarters, but this time I'm going to start attacking that outside pass and um, start cutting angles and switching sides. If you notice, I held onto the ankle there. That way, as I cut the angle, and he had to realign himself, I swung him back the other way and tried to go to hip and knee post. However, Owen's able to get that right leg over my back and uh, high legs. And as I go to switch um, the passing direction using a, a duck under pass, he holds onto my hand and he actually submits me with this shoulder lock. And he's been, he was talking to me about that before, but I didn't really believe in it until it actually happened to me. So we're gonna see that a little later again, but right now we're gonna start working back to the angles. I personally don't like it when my opponent concedes to the inversion because I know it's a strong position where I can stack them, but I actually don't really know how to stack them from that position. So I attempt to go for the duck under pass again. This time he pulls my leg into a leg entanglement and he's gonna start using some instructional content and go into reverse close guard. So he's gonna use reverse close guard to sweep me and come on top and he'll begin working his passing again. I think just one of the biggest benefits that I've, I've taken from this round is just watching how he uses his legs and how he's pommeling and out pommeling my frames. Even, even when I'm able to capture him here, he chains it directly into a back take using a, uh, a wedging 
or stomp stomp back take as you can see he inserts his right knee under my hip as he stomps his left leg down elevating my hips and then he'll drag my shoulders up and instead of attacking the back he actually just goes for guillotine as i turn into him and i use that to go to mount now it always sucks in the days where your highlight is not being submitted with a submission that someone better than you is attacking and uh, fortunately i was able to get it at a guillotine but didn't really do much besides that this round so far so while he wasn't able to get the guillotine i did have my arms pretty high and he did end up in a very high mount so he's able to transition to this commode grip and then he'll use this to attack the arm bar and submit me for i think i think we're on three now I'll attempt to flip over, blocking that leg, but I'm I'm not fast enough to come up and he's able to get that leg back on top of my face and disconnect my hand from my knee and he's able to take that arm out. So as we near the end of the round here, I'm going to go in for a slap underhook before then transitioning to um, what I'm really focused on working at the moment, which is camping. And he's able to get that high leg in there before I'm able to get my head low enough to block the leg and to lock up onto an arm bar here. But I'm able to posture out of it and uh, sit into a half guard of sorts. So I know he's about to go for this kiss of the dragon and once again I'm closing off the space under my hips and I'm actually able to slap that underhook out of the way and grab a deep underhook and start transitioning to a, uh, a, a more solid position flattening him out. And so right now I'm thinking I got this motherfucker dead to rights it's over I have the deep underhook he's flat and uh, I'm gonna get this pass but I f up right here as I bring my leg out of his hook. I should have kept this a little bit longer, flattened him out, grinded a little bit more, because as I took this leg out, he's a, he regains the mobility in the hips, and he's able to spring off of his back. He'll then lock onto the dar. So to defend this, I sit out hard, um, spinning around and trying to put him back in a headlock, but he's able to push me away and reconstitute himself to a neutral position. So in the final few seconds of the round, he transitions back to his reverse close guard. But if there's one thing that's not gonna happen this round is I will not become an OnlyFans model for his instructional content. And um, I'm gonna avoid the toe hold and the leg locks until the time runs out. And uh, that's pretty much it. So for this round, I was able to take away a lot of outside passing details and I hope you guys were too. If you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for the camping progression series video coming out in the next few weeks. However, you guys can also check out the North South progression in the meantime.